Hello ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to the channel. And as for request, I um, I am doing how I got started on YouTube and how I really figured that this is what I want to do as a hobby slash I want to make this into kind of sort of a real. Well, it all started when I started to play Fallout 3 and I really loved it. I really did. Uh, I remember getting a Xbox 360 for Christmas one year. It was an Xbox 360 Slim. And this was after, you know, Fallout 3 and New Vegas came out. Uh, and uh, I remember sitting for hours upon hours just playing those two games. Uh, when, it f when Fallout first came out, or well, Fallout 3 first came out in 2008, I constantly went over to one of my best friend's place and played it. And then after that, I started to play Fallout New Vegas because, you know, I had Fallout 3 in Vegas with me with the, you know, game of the year. So I had all the DLCs. And then I got myself a computer and I downloaded Fallout 1 and 2. And I found love with just that style of the top-down um, uh, isometric gameplay that Fallout 1 and 2 had where it's it was kind of like a uh a take a turn kind of thing combat uh it was very interesting I loved it and then Fallout 4 came out and that is when I got myself the Xbox One and I remember that was the only game that I ever went to the launch date and actually was there when the release of the game was announced and that was the experience that I would never forget. Uh, the town, oh sorry, the city I live in, we have two mall, two malls, and we have two game stores here in town. Uh, they're both called EB Games. We have one on the north end, one down in the south. They were both open, uh, and uh, I remember going to the mall at around what was it like ten thirty because the release date of the game was actually at. Uh, I think 11 or something like that. It wasn't actual midnight release, thank God, because I had to work in the morning. And when I got there, there was just a massive lineup of people cosplaying as um, Skyrim, uh, like the Dover King, uh, the Vault Dweller from Fallout 3. Any Bethesda game, there was people cosplaying. And they were playing, you know, classic Fallout music from like, you know, Fallout 3, stuff like that. And one of the uh, the ladies who was working at EB Games were actually hand handing out bottled Coca-Cola to everyone that was in line. So that was an experience that I will never forget until Fallout 76 came out. And yeah, I, I had the beta and stuff like that. And I gave it high praise to a point that a lot of my friends got it. We started playing and then everything just dropped off because I, I finished Fallout 76, I pretty much got to the end game and nothing was interesting. Uh, with the recent update that came out, it kind of sort of makes it enjoyable and makes it playable for players who have, you know, got it from the very beginning, but this game has really tarnished the reputation of Fallout. Uh, Fallout 76 is quote-unquote the first game in the series because of where it starts. It starts 25 years after 2077, so it was, it's before Fallout 1, it's before Fallout 2, and it's I think 100 years before Fallout 3. So yeah, um, whatever you really do in Fallout 76 doesn't really matter through all the other games because uh, West Virginia is kind of sort of mentioned and some of the Fallout games but they don't go into real depth and explanation of that state so you never know maybe in Fallout 5 uh, the events that go on in this game might be introduced and then they can actually add Fallout 76 to the main uh, progression of Fallout knows. But uh, as a true Fallout fan, I have the pet boy um, from Fallout 76. I have two tattoos 
even from the Fallout franchise tattooed on me, I have the Enclave and I have the Brotherhood of Steel. Um, both are my two favorite factions, even though they're pretty much similar to one another. One's just, you know, a branch of the official uh, members of the United States government, and the other one are just the formal members of the, uh, the United States military, i.e. being like, you know, the soldiers and stuff like that. That would be the Brotherhood and the presidents and the senators and all that will form the, uh, the Enclave soon after. So let's dive into some, you know, some gameplay of 76 and actually talk about what really this update's all about. So let's get to it. So here we are in Fallout 76. Um, as you guys can see by the background gameplay, this is actually my camp. And I spent a couple of hours actually building this. Um, this recent update gave us uh, the Pioneer Scouts of America. So that's that's a pretty good quest line. I'm actually, you know, doing it myself. And but they also gave us vending machines. We can sell a lot of our items at, you know, at our own um, currency, well, not currency, but our own prices of bottle caps. So that's a, that, that's a nice little feature right there. Um, and what else has really brought in? Um, you know, when you have these stores active, your camp becomes visual, visible to everyone that's on the map and anyone else who has, you know, the same thing is, um, you can look around the map and see exactly who's selling what and how many of each items that they have for sale. So then, you know, instead of going to, you know, the, uh, the train stations and all that and going to vendor bots and all that, you can actually interact with other players and see the settlements and the places that people have built and then you can, you know, buy stuff. It's actually really, really interesting. Let's just go to one. So here we are. We uh, managed to come into a another person's camp. And yeah, this is this is actually kind of cool. You can actually see how other people have instructed their place. You can go in, select the vending machine, and whatever they have on sale will be apparent. And apparently this guy only has, you know, two weapons available. But then you can actually, you know, walk around and see everything else of this person's camp. It's actually a really nice feature. Um, it definitely adds in the whole, um, every player you meet is going to be a real person. And I just wish that they had a bit more engaging storyline to Fallout 76, uh, a bit more of a battle faction system when it comes to the factions. And that is now leading us to, you know, War Thunder and uh, the content that you guys see today. Originally, I wanted to do um, Fallout gameplay, Fallout lore kind of stuff like that, and how to get uh, quests done in certain ways, either good or evil way. It's just that I'm pretty sure that you guys don't really want me to be like, you know, reading things out and stuff like that. So I opt to go with you know, the War Thunder route. And it's still in one of my peak interest when it comes to history and specifically the vehicles within history i.e being like you know the bloom bell that you guys see the kv the uh the panther a the the tiger e actually funny enough when the panthers first came out they didn't start at you know, you know a b and c they started at like you know the opposite direction where you have like you know the panther d then you have the panther a then you have the panther g and then you have the panther f which I think was the very last model before, you know, the blueprinted Panther 2 was, you know, being developed. And so when it comes to vehicles like this that have a history behind them, which have character behind them, I absolutely love it. And if you guys want me, when I'm doing my reviews on vehicles, if you guys want me to do a part one that just talks about the history of a certain vehicle, and I can try to find examples of uh, specific tank commandos uh, that will inside of those vehicles I can tell a little bit of their story as you know part one and then part two will be the um, the gameplay and stuff like that but also in part one 
I'll talk about the stats and uh, if the uh, the in-game vehicle stacks up to the historical because most games have a thing called a balancing aspect too when it comes to vehicles which I totally understand because most of the vehicles that I've played if they were anything like the historical counterparts they wouldn't even make you know 10 feet in front of them without breaking down so there's that so if you guys want me to do that please comment down below and thank you so much for Crusade Crusader 05 for suggesting that I would do a how do I how did I get started so thank you once again and the only thing I can really say to inspiring people who want to do YouTube videos and stuff like that is uh, it isn't what it's all meant out to be it is very uh, time consuming um, I'm doing it right now as a hobby even though I am on medical leave right now the first thing you guys want to do is build a community make uh, gameplay make videos that you like and if people like it then they will come don't force people to come to your channel don't force people to subscribe and stuff like that uh, I want that the hard way with uh, a couple of my videos and uh, yeah just don't be forceful just be natural just be yourself and if people like you they will come and yeah that's the only real thing as I can say and so, with that all being said, ladies and gentlemen, this has been the Canadian Prince. I'll catch you guys next time.